This is the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 25, and it reads the Holy Scriptures. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars and upon the earth the stress of the nations with perplexity of the seas and, and the rays one. Second Ezra. Chapter 3. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars in the people in the world. Second Ezra's 15, verse 15, and it reads through the Holy Scriptures. For the sword and their destruction draw nigh, and one people should stand up and fight against one another with swords in their hands. Second Ezra's. Uh, 15 verse 16 for there should be sedition among men invading one another they shall not regard their kings nor their princes and the course of their actions should stand in their power Shalom first and foremost I'd like to give all praises and glory and honor to to Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai Ba'ashem Rukakadash double Honors to the elders for preaching his word truthfully and sincerely. And Shalom to the Akim, scattered through the four corners of the globe, preaching the word truthfully and sincerely. And I say Shalom to you, Akim, out there. Let's bring in our diplomatic editor, James Bays, who's in occupied East Jerusalem. James, you have some breaking news from where you are. What's happening? Yes, uh, I, I'm uh, by Damascus Gate in East Jerusalem, but also in occupied East Jerusalem in the Silwan area. We are getting reports of a shooting. We understand that two settlers have been shot. No information yet on the scale of their injuries, the severity of their injuries, but that's news in the last half hour or so that two settlers have been shot here in uh, East Jerusalem, adding to a really tense situation. I can tell you that in the last few minutes, we witnessed a couple of Palestinians who were walking down here, didn't appear to be doing anything to us at all, being snatched by the Israeli police, taken into their police checkpoint. Uh, they were then uh, searched, but we saw them being beaten as they were being searched. Uh, then, moments later, uh, our camera operator was filming that, and a settler came up to him and pushed him away, and you're not allowed to be here, and started pushing at his camera. Uh, so just an indication of how tense it is right now in, in, uh, in, in East Jerusalem, uh, in this area, after the events that we've seen in the last 48 hours, after what we saw with regard to the uh, seven that were killed at the synagogue, uh, in the settlement in East Jerusalem, but also what we saw in Janine, that most deadly attack on Palestinians, 10 people, including, including an elderly woman killed in that attack. Uh, the violence is continuing, I'm afraid. All the calls for restraint don't seem to be having the effect uh, that uh, those who've made the calls in the international community uh, mm. would like. Uh, and the latest incident reported Silwan and uh, two settlers, we believe, shot. We're obviously chasing more information uh, from uh, the, the various sources. And we ourselves, uh, as soon as we finish talking to you, are going to go and head a little bit closer to Silwan to find out what we can. Mm, OK, it certainly sounds like things are reaching a boiling point. We are getting some pictures in at the moment. These are the latest pictures of potentially that shooting. So uh, we'll cross back to you with more information once we get it. In the meantime, James, uh, where Netanyahu is convening a security cabinet meeting on Saturday night to discuss a further response. Yes, and um, we don't really know what the Israeli government are planning at this stage. What we do know is that the police presence, you can perhaps see there are some police officers just um, going past me now, uh, that's increased. They're, they're on now their highest state of alert. Um, and we understand that Israeli police officers are all being told now they're working a 12-hour shift. Uh, what we don't know is what more uh, the Israeli government are going to do. We know that in the Mount of Olives, at the place where uh, the man, the Israeli police say, was responsible for the attack uh, on the synagogue, he was shot dead at the scene in his car, uh, there um, the 
His parents have been questioned by Israeli police, but also other neighboring Palestinians who'd come to the house. Uh, they were arrested, 42 in total, arrested uh, there. Um, the security cabinet will meet, we think, in Tel Aviv at the defense ministry, probably, well, certainly after sundown, at the end of Shabbat, the end of the Sabbath here uh, for Jews. Uh, and uh, what they will do, I think, is not entirely clear. One factor in all this is the fact there's a very high profile visit coming in the coming days and that's the US Secretary of State Antony Blinken who will be here on a pre-planned visit but clearly uh, the violent situation will be top of his agenda. He's going first to Cairo then in Jerusalem he's going to meet with Prime Minister Netanyahu and other key members of the new hardline Israeli government and also meet members of the Palestinian Authority we're told. So that may in some way be part of the calculations for the Israeli security cabinet because they don't, I don't think, want to launch huge crackdown operations at a time when there is a visit uh, by such a high-ranking official and the Israeli and the US administration position is similar to that coming from the UN and the entire international mm. community. They want restraint by all sides right now. Thank you very much, James. Certainly many moving parts. And as we were speaking to you, for your knowledge, we are seeing some what appears to be amateur vision, maybe phone vision um, of that scene in Silwan and potentially someone being loaded into an ambulance that had been either injured fatally or not. So that information is still coming in um, and we'll give it to you as we get it. All right, let's cross to Gaza now, where Imran Khan is standing by for us. Imran, what's been the reaction by Palestinians to that synagogue shooting on Friday night? Well, before I answer that question, I'm just gonna stop talking for a second. You might well be able to hear uh, the mosque loudspeakers actually announcing that incident uh, in Silwan. Uh, so that's got some reaction coming there uh, almost immediately as we were on air uh, from uh, the mosque announcing uh, the death of the two settlers uh, via the mosque loudspeakers. Um, it's yet to be confirmed like exactly what they're saying is all in the distance. But that's the kind of reaction that we've been seeing uh, here in uh, the Gaza strip. Uh, Hazem uh, Qasim, who's a spokesman for Hamas, uh, actually said that Friday's attack was a response to the crime committed uh, by the occupation in Janine and a natural response to the occupation's criminal actions. And that's echoed by all of the Palestinian factions across uh, the Gaza Strip. They've all said pretty much the same thing. They all said this was a swift and justified response to the events in Janin. On TikTok, on Instagram, on Facebook, on social media, a lot of Palestinians have been showing solidarity with the occupied West Bank, with occupied East Jerusalem, saying, good, uh, the Israelis will think twice about killing Palestinians. But with every single attack, with every uh, single incident that happens in the West Bank, there's fear here in Gaza. There's actually a saying here. Uh, what starts in the West Bank, in the occupied West Bank, actually finishes in Gaza. And what they mean by that is oftentimes uh, the Gaza Strip becomes a target because of the Palestinian factions here. And when the Israelis cross a red line here and they start bombing not empty targets or targets they think they can get away with, but uh, strategic targets, then Islamic Jihad, for example, or Hamas has to react. That means rockets going as far as Tel Aviv, like we saw in 2021 and a mass escalation. Now, so far, uh, no one has claimed responsibility for this attack. And indeed, uh, the attacker uh, at the street near the synagogue uh, had no Israeli security file on him. He was actually shot dead, but there was no known political affiliations either. But what people here in the Gaza Strip are worried about, that the Israeli government will come up with a political affiliation, uh, perhaps to Islamic Jihad, perhaps to Hamas, and that means that they will react here in the Strip. All right, keep us posted as to what happens on the ground there. Imran Khan, live for us in Gaza. Thank you. Moving on now to other world news and protests have been held across. If you're an options trader, day trader. So, yeah, as you see right there, the uh, latest attack. <clears throat> I believe it was a 13-year-old Palestinian who did that. I think uh, two was... Uh, seriously injured it was a father and a son and a 13 year old uh palestinian uh arab uh did that you know that comes days uh, a day later after that uh 
that you know that uh, high casualty uh, shooting over there in, uh, near the uh, synagogue over there in uh, East Jerusalem uh, where you know uh, a total of eight people were killed 11 injured you know and that's what you see in the increasing of that sedition among men and that's what we're seeing in the latter days and I'm gonna bring that out again this is a uh, second Ezra chapter 15 verse 15 for the sword and their destruction draw nigh and one people should stand up and fight against another with the Israeli Palestine situation continue uh, increasing and swords in their hands right because the modern day sword is a weapon you know it says verse 16 uh, second Ezra 16 and 16 and it reads for there shall be sedition among men, invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor their princes. In the course of their actions, shall stand in their power, right? Because the uh, right, because the uh, Palestinians, you know, you know, they're not gonna resist, you know, and that's what we're seeing. You know, we're seeing the rebel, the rebellious of the uh, Palestinians, you know. They feel like they're getting uh, discriminated against. They feel like they're occupied. You know, their uh, homes and families getting uh, get messed up, getting discriminated against, getting assaulted, getting innocent killed, innocent children, innocent women and children, you know, innocent men sometimes, you know, by the Israelis' uh, defense force. And, you know, that's why... Uh, the Palestinians rebellion going against them, you know, and that's what you call sedition among men, and that's what we are seeing. Those tensions are definitely uh, increasingly. For the past couple of days, you've been seeing uh, increased hostility between both sides, the Palestinian side and the Israeli side, you know. And those Palestinians, you know, a hey, they are, uh, hey, they doing action against those Israelis, you know. With that uh, recent raid that happened over there in the West Bank, you know, uh, the Israeli raid killed nine Palestinians, and there was a huge response to that, you know, and Palestinians, you know, they weren't going to go out like that, you know, They're like, hey, we're going to, hey, we're going to take, we're going to respond back, you know, and that's what you've seen, that latest shooting over there uh, near, the, near uh, East Jerusalem in the synagogue over there where eight, eight people were killed and 11 were injured, you know. And now you have the recent attack. Uh, a 13-year-old Palestinian uh, shot and injured, uh, seriously uh, injuring uh, a man and a father, I believe. So, hey, those tensions are stirring up over there in the Middle East, you know. And that's why I brought that Luke 21 and 25 out. I'm going to bring it out again for edification, so... This is the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 25, and it reads, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations were perplexing in the seas, in the sea and the raised world, right? Because we are seeing the stress of the nations with these uprises, uprolls and the people of the world, sedition among men. And that's what we are seeing, you know. With the tensions over there in the Middle East between the Palestinians and the Israelis. And, uh, I'll break out another news article. And this was, uh, as of recently as well, too, from January the 28th, 2023, uh, by Reuters, and it reads Saudi Arabia warns of situation between the Palestinians and the Israelis escalating further. It says Saudi Arabia has warned of the situation between the Palestinians and the Israelis escalation further after an attack on a synagogue, including the latest one of the uh, of a 13 year old person shot uh, two people seriously injuring them. So it was like two or three attacks in response from the Palestinians from the uh, the uh, Israeli raid over there in the West Bank. It says escalated further after the attack on a synagogue in Jerusalem. The kingdom's foreign minister said on Saturday, the kingdom condemns targeting civilians, stressing necessities, I mean necessities of stopping the escalation. 
reviving the peace process when, when that comes to mind first thessalonians 5 and 3 i believe for when they shall say peace and safety it says ending the occupation ministry added in a state so yeah hey these tensions are definitely stirring up between these two you know that's why it says nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom matter of fact i'm gonna bring that up this is the book of Matthews 24, verse 7, and it reads, this is uh, Matthews 24 and 7, for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places, right? Because we're seeing a rise and increase of a nation, nations rising up against another nation, and that's a nation... That's a nation going against another nation. You know, the Palestinians of their nation going against another nation of the Israeli uh, Israeli Defense Force. And that's what we're seeing uh, in the latter days, you know, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. You know, two different kingdoms going against one another and two different nations going against one another. And that's what we're seeing in the Middle East. You know, these tensions are going to uh, increase more and more and more in the Middle East, you know. And so with that, I uh, hope this uh, lesson was edifying of this uh, scriptures that I brought out in the beginning in the news clip of that latest attack over there in the Middle East, East Jerusalem, of a 13-year-old boy uh, killed, I mean uh, injured, two, seriously injuring two people, a father and a son, I believe, and the 13-year-old, uh, I believe he's in custody. You know, that's the day after uh, that synagogue attack near the synagogue in uh, East Jerusalem of uh, eight people were killed, a 10 or 11 injured. So that's what we're seeing in the latter days, that sedition among men spirit, you know, invading one another. And that's what's happening. And the nation is rising up against one another. So tensions are definitely increasing in the Middle East, you know, so it potentially might increase more and more and more. After those latest incidents, you know, as you see, the uh, Israeli uh, uh, Israeli uh, defense force boosting up the uh, security over there in that region over there in the Middle East, East Jerusalem, uh, the West Bank, the Occupied Bank in that region over there as well, too. You know, so as tensions uh, continue to increase between the Israelis and the Palestinians over there in the Middle East. And once again, I hope for this uh, sit-down lesson was edifying. I would like to give all praises and glory and honor to to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Makarkadash. Double honors to the elders for preaching His word truthfully and sincerely, and Shalom to the Akim scattered through the four corners of the globe, preaching the word truthfully and sincerely. And until next time, I will say Shalom.